Well, kia ora and welcome into the Harness Half Hour, proudly brought to you by HRNZ Marketing. Our guests today are Barry Purden, Kyle Cameron, Hamish Malloy, Courtney Clark and bookmaker Richard Wilson. But now, here are today's headlines. Victorian trainer Andy Gath last week announced he is targeting Cup Week starts with his talented trotter, Tornado Valley. The Dominion is the major target, with the Bill Collins Mile the next stop on the campaign trail. Owners' night at Addington last Friday was successful with a room full with 300 people. Also 19 people registered to be owners on the night. HRNZ in Addington would like to thank everyone who attended and thank all of those who helped in making the event a success. The findings of the two trial nights will now be presented at annual conference for clubs to utilise in future. And good news for harness racing fans, the HRNZ Super Stable is open now. Entries close this Thursday, 13th of September, so be sure to get your entry in for the chance to win some great prizes. And this is also your final chance to purchase HRNZ Awards tickets. Sales end Friday the 14th of September, and for full information you can visit hrnz.co.nz. Well, as we build up to the New Zealand Cup lead-up races, of course, we've already had the Morris Holmes Vars and shortly we'll start seeing the North Island campaign starting. We're chatting with Barry Purden, who is the man behind Jack's Legend. Uh, Barry, thank you very much for your time. And firstly, how is Jack's Legend and his preparation? Yeah, no, he's great, uh, Jess. We, we went to the trials on Saturday with him and uh, he just finished him behind them, uh, the field. But, um, uh, no, he's, he's come up well. I'm pleased with his work. Okay, and um, was Zach in the sulky on this occasion? I know he's been the regular pilot, and, and if so, did he give you any, any feel around how he is? Yeah, no, actually, Scotty Phelan drove him on uh, Saturday, uh, just as uh, Zach's on holiday, so, um, uh, but he'll be back in the cart when he gets back, yes. Oh, good, okay, and Scott obviously felt like he had plenty more in the tank and just, you know, building him up progressively. Yes, yes that's right, he hasn't raced for a long time, and uh, so we just went quietly with him, but um, he's got to get back to the trials on the... Um, on the 21st of September and um, he'll have a bit of a serious run then so uh, his first starts a week later on the 28th. Fantastic and, and you must be so thrilled Barry with the, the horse the way this horse has progressed obviously early on in the juvenile stages picking up a Jules win but being able to step up into that cup class and hold his own? Oh yes for sure yeah no look we were thrilled last year on the cup he, he ran a good second to arguably probably one of the greatest horses we've ever seen and and um and come out on the free for all, um, and he, he did pretty well, really. You know, and he got beaten at the X. So, um, no, I, I thought his I thought his runs were really good. So, obviously, leading into the Cup this year, there there isn't a Lazarus, and it's probably looking at one of the most even Cup fields for years, Barry. So, how are the connections feeling? Well, they're just looking. <laughs> they're getting excited. They're looking forward to getting down to Christchurch. So. Um, yeah, no, we are too, so uh, it's a nice time of the year and it's a great place to be when you've got a horse good enough. Fantastic. And, and does he cope with the travelling? Is he quite a good all-rounder now, Jack's legend? Oh, yes, he is. Yes, no, he's, um, he doesn't worry about much, so uh, no, he always eats good and travels well. Yep. Fantastic. And um, ch- chatting about other horses in, in the team that are really making waves, Barry, I don't think there's been such a huge reputation around a first starter in quite some time as the one we see with Dream Major. Yes, no, he's a really nice colt. He's um, he's going uh, to the trials on the 22nd, um, of this, uh, which is next week, and um, he's going to race uh, at Auckland on the... Uh, I'm sorry, he's going to the trials on Saturday on the 15th. He's going to race on the 21st. Uh, and then going into a size stake seat at Cambridge, uh, I think it's the 4th of October. So, yeah, he's um, he's a really nice horse. I'm really pleased with him. He's, um, he, he's come up well. He, he's, everything he's done, he's done pretty much himself really he's uh, yeah nice to work with did he always show that amount of ability early on or has he been a type that's kind of progressed into it over the last few months he always showed um, a bit of ability like he did uh, but but he was a quite a big horse and um, and we could have started him you know as a two-year-old but uh, I made a suggestion to the owners that we just give him a bit of time and don't too much pressure on him at this stage and they were good and said yeah just do what you think you should do so um, I think it'll pay rewards for us uh, in the long run. So, uh, no, he could have easily made a two-year-old, but uh, as I say, just decided to, to, to take our time. And was he a horse, Barry, that you selected through the sales, or, or how did he come your way? Yeah, we bought him through the yearling sales, yes. So um, he was bought in Christchurch. He's one of Jeff Whitaker's draft. 
Fantastic, and he, obviously there was something about him. Was it, would it was it pedigree or more type with him that stood out? Well, it was a bit of both. He's out of a really good mare, and uh, uh, but he was a good type. He, he had a bit of presence about him, and uh, he stood out a bit. Barry, thank you so much for your time today. And as I say, good luck with the campaigns with Jack's Legend and Dream Major going forward. Yeah, no worries, Jess. Thank you. And in social media news from New Zealand, Brent Williams trained his first winner with I'll Do It My Way at Rangiora on Sunday. Well done to Brent. Don't forget our new North Island Harness podcast, Whiteout with Aaron White, comes out every Wednesday afternoon via our website and also the Punters Lounge on tab.co.nz. From Australia Social, my Kiwi mate was a huge winner at Melton. Adam Hamilton tweeted how impressed the, how impressive the victory was. Also, he tweeted regarding the sad passing of open class pacer in Messini. You can follow Adam Hamilton on Twitter for the latest information from Australia. And from the US and Canada, big headlines being made with Foiled again. He continues his farewell tour in the US. He's now picked up 102 career wins. And you can follow his tour and journey by following the US Harness Fan Zone on Twitter. One young trainer that is really finding the new racing season has been a huge success so far is Kyle Cameron. Uh, Kyle, congratulations. Uh, two wins over the weekend and a recent double at Addington. Yeah, no, it's been a really, really good start um, to the season for me. I'm um, probably racing a few more horses than I normally do, but um, just having a little bit of luck at the moment too and um, everything's going right. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more to it, Kyle, than a little bit of luck. But how many have you got in work at the moment? And whereabouts are you based for those who are unaware? Um, I've got 11 here at the moment. Um, I'm just just out of Rand Europe, Fernside, on, on my father's property. Fantastic. And uh, with that amount in work, uh, have you got anyone helping you out or volunteer or calling on family? Yeah, I've got a, got a couple of very loyal supporters. Um, uh, one helper that comes a couple of days a week and... Um, my wife Michelle chips in um, when, when I need her as well. So and, and my father Ian, he um, helps out when I need him as well. My goodness, I'm, I'm sure that it helps that they're all very good horse people in their own right. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's um, it means that uh, I can sort of leave them to do everything they need to do, and um, yeah, no, no mistakes are made, which is a big help. Wonderful. And and of those four wins, two have been with Medusa. And have you found, obviously being associated with Trotters in the past, they, they can be real heart-in-the-mouth material? Yeah, yeah, she's um, been off and on her whole career. This this time of year seems to really, really suit her. Uh, most of her wins have sort of come around these these months. And um, she's just right in the groove at the moment. I haven't, um, haven't done a whole lot different, but um, probably she's just turned six and um, probably just grown into herself now and... Um, holding a condition the best she ever has and um, yeah so we'll just keep picking her along at the moment. Cole you mentioned obviously you've got a lot of family involvement and people who have, would have mentored you and, and given you guidance but have there been any main people during your career that have given you the leg up or, or that you've been able to turn to for advice or you know to get pointed in the right direction? Yeah I've been pretty lucky I've always worked for um, pretty capable horse people um, my father especially obviously still giving me advice daily um, sometimes sometimes I ask for it sometimes I don't but I still get it and um, uh, yeah every every trainer I've worked for they've always been um, very good I, I can still go back to Greg Hope and ask him questions and he'll, he'll always um, uh, you know give me advice um, what he thinks should you know is the best course of action so um, very very handy in that respect. And have you found that you've had quite loyal support from, from your owners coming through the family connection and, and moving on to you? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, Opawa Racing have had a lot of horses um, with me um, since I've started and, and they, you know, Dad used to train for them and, and they've been fantastic to me and, um, and still are. And uh, yeah, so I've picked up a few owners that way, uh, which has been a big help. You mentioned, Kyle, that the numbers are starting to increase in your team. Is that a goal that you've got, or is it, is it something that's just kind of happening organically? Do you set goals, I guess, is another question. Um, oh, I do. I do. At the start of the season, I sort of wanted to be there last season, and, and I think we've already tied that, so <laughs> that's, that's always good. Um, but, but um, you yeah, know, uh, probably the numbers have been steady my whole, whole time, really, actually. I'm probably in a wee bit of a spot at the moment that all my... All my owners are probably uh, retirement age and older, and I haven't really developed any new ones, so that's something I'm going to really have to look into because um, it's all right for the next couple of years. But um, going forward, if 
if I don't uh, source some new owners, um, I'll probably won't be in the industry, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so that is, that sounds like it's a big goal for many people at the moment in terms of retaining their their owners. But um, in terms of winning a big race or, or targeting a, a trotter or a pacer at, at a particular race, Kyle, is, is there one that's right up there? Um, oh, Medusa will be interesting to see if she can progress. She's you know middle grade at the moment. If she can progress further, she might be able to target some you know um, sort of free for all races later on. Uh, just depends how much further she can develop um, and. Um, probably this season I've got Finn Frost aimed at the, the show day futurity that's probably the biggest race I'll be looking at in the near future anyway Wow fantastic well it's a great to have you know goals that are in such an immediate future as well and in terms of uh, being a dad and a husband now how do you find the work life balance going on? Oh it's, it's really enjoyable um, I mean it definitely is a balance uh, a sort of you know yesterday we won a race and that was exciting and I got home and um, you know in the past, you'd probably go and have a drink. I, I um, went home to my daughter Mackenzie, and um, she I had to help her long rein the um, the rocking horse, oh. and I was the the clerk of the horse. And her, her words, so so yeah, it um, definitely you know gives you another aspect if things aren't going right. Well, you've you know you've got something else to concentrate on, and um, and I really enjoy it. So it's um, it's great. What a brilliant philosophy, Kyle. Uh, congratulations on the success already this season. Four wins in, in the can and I'm sure many, many more to come and it'll be really exciting to follow Finn Frost and Medusa going forward. And I guess um, if anyone's listening and, and uh, wanting to send a horse your way, you're more than happy to get the call? Oh, definitely, definitely. There's always room for more more horses here. Um, um, yeah, uh, plenty of space and, and happy to um, cater. I, you know, I do everything, breaking in, pre-training, training. So... Um, Yep, always, cell phone's always on. Good, well, I'm sure the phone calls will come your way now, Kyle. Thank you so much for your time, and well done again. Thank you very much, Jess. Well, it's that exciting time of year where we start to look towards big grass track racing and the first grass track meet for the new season is coming up at Methven uh, this Sunday, September 16. President of the club is Hamish Malloy. Hamish, obviously this is a very exciting time for you and the committee. Uh, yes, it is, um, Jess. Um, you started the uh, grass tracks really slow at the start of the year. We're actually, we're actually the last grass track to race too um, during the season too, um, later on in March. So, yeah, no, the committee have been working hard in the, um, in the winter time uh, preparing for this first meeting. Yeah, and it's our club's day, um, which one of our uh, committee members, Dave Bailey, has a lot to do with, which we thank him um, very much. Yeah. Fantastic. So can you tell us a bit more, Hamish, about what, what is involved in the club's day at this meeting? Um, what happens, I think, uh, Keith, um, he's in charge of New Zealand clubs and uh, he's based in Christchurch, so he's worked on um, getting the Christchurch clubs involved. Um, talking to Dave just recently, there's about 500 people coming. Wow. So with our grandstand being um, taken down now, well, we've always put a tent up and we've always had to start off with a small tent, but now we've actually got to a quite a big tent. And um, it's a big day on a Saturday before a Sunday racing that we're preparing the and all the members, um, committee men all come down and we spend an afternoon um, getting it all set up for them, yeah. My goodness, so it just goes to highlight, Hamish, the amount of man hours, or woman hours as well, but the amount <laughs> the amount of volunteer hours, I guess you could say, that, that go into running a club like this and, and to get a group of 500 alone coming along with the clubs is, is just a huge testament to the dedication of your team. Oh yeah, no. We're, that's that's the beauty of um. You've got to realise we're all volunteers. So I mean, but you say we're all volunteers. We have a lot of fun though, um, doing it, and that's probably why we're doing it. Mm. It's not about the money and everything, and um, and um, yeah, getting there is just the main thing. We will have a lot of fun and, and have frank discussions at our meetings too. Don't don't be afraid of that. You know, we really thrash things out. But no, it is. It's a really thank to my committee. They do a really lot of hard work, and um, we're very passionate people for the game. Um, going forward, you know, we're always trying to look at things going, you know, for the future for the game too. Wonderful. So you can guarantee that there's going to be a very, very good atmosphere on course this Sunday. And as you mentioned, a lot of hours going into getting the course ready for this meeting. But looking ahead, Hamish should be very excited. Uh, this year, the Alabar Methven Cup worth thirty thousand dollars, and historically one of the key build-in races for the New Zealand Cup. Yes, it is actually. No, so we've actually had about what three, or four horses that have um, gone on to win the New Zealand Cup from um, that race. So, I mean, hopefully, we can get a, another Cup winner out of um, our Alabar um, Cup this year. And you know, the stakes are holding up there. We're trying to 
keep you know keep things um, ahead of the game and yeah, and be positive. I know we've had to drop our maiden stakes a little bit, but we've actually upped our other stakes for another five hundred dollars. So we've lost a little bit, but gained a little bit um, going forward for the season, um, Jess. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, continuing the, the feature race program, you've got the Green Mile, so Trotters and Paces, and they're always key events for your racing calendar. Yeah, oh, definitely that Christmas um, meeting. No, it's a real great day. Um, we do struggle that time of year. We have competing with um, probably three other race tracks, which is what we're looking into uh, going forward for the, you know, um, because, you know, there's three meetings before we actually we line up on Sunday. So it does does affect us a wee bit, but um, not too bad. We're very lucky that, um, that a lot of people do come to MEF and, and, um, and we have got good facilities and we try to make it a good day. But no, those mile races are magnificent. You know, thanks to Ricky last year, we um, had to pay a um, bit of a bonus out on both of them. So, But hey, look, that's what we're here for. It must be a, a massive bonus too to have someone of the calibre of Ricky May on, on the team and pushing people to race there. Oh, like Ricky's um, magnificent on the club, you know, like he's He's not just a um, horseman and driving racehorses. He actually runs our farm. Yeah. And um, for the last four or five years, that, that has made us, it's kept us our head above water. Um, running the races is good, and we actually try and work hard to make come out even. But, you know, like every other racing club, it is hard work. But Ricky does a lot behind the scenes. Um, just, yeah, he's just one of those good guys that helps out on the, on the committee like everybody else. And you'd be encouraging listeners, Hamish, if uh, they're contemplating bringing a picnic or maybe chucking a few friends in the car because the, well, the weather recently has been very, very good, but historically it can be a little bit iffy in Christchurch and beautiful up there. Yeah, that's what you do, man. You wake up here. That if everybody listens to um, the, in the morning, gets rings one of us up the committee and we'll give you uh, what it's like up here. Like you say, it can be quite... Um quite cool and at the cold east in Christchurch and next thing it's a beautiful day out here which at the moment is we had a hard frost this morning and it's actually magnificent and I was thinking well wake up on September the 16th and it's like this you know don't be afraid to come out it's free get on course we don't charge anybody we um, give free race books away so look it's just come out and enjoy yourself that's all we want you know that's all we want to do Fantastic, and that word free, it means a lot to a lot of people because they, they get in the gate and naturally spend money, but for people wanting to bring the family along or friends and have a picnic, there aren't a lot of affordable options left, so this is the ideal choice. Yeah, definitely, uh, Jess. Um, no, we've got a lovely big car park, and that's what Methan's about. Just pull up, enjoy your, enjoy your day out. That's what we want. People need to enjoy themselves. Hey, look, it's leisure money they're spending, and we want you to come out and, and um, enjoy yourself at our racetrack, um, and we'll have... Um, bits and pieces going on, like there's, this, um, there's cafes, we cafe um, caravans and um, Mr. Ice, Ice, or it might be cold for him yet, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're actually looking for another Mr. Whippy too. Right. <laughs> so there's a... The... <laughs> moved on, so if anybody's got a Mr. Whippy, I think we're looking at getting him on site, and, and we've got, yeah, the cafe, um, the coffee um, caravan, yeah, but hey, look, it's just come out and enjoy yourself and... Um, and uh, yeah, and, and what's good racing for the for maidens and as a lower key race, but we'll have a big crowd of uh, good club people on there and having a good time, a bit of music. So yeah. Brilliant. Well, it is um, one of the most spectacular race courses, not only in the country, but in the world. And I'm sure it'll be another cracker. Hamish Malloy, president of the Meth and Trotting Club. Thank you so much for your time and all the best for what I know will be another successful season for you and the team. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jess, for um, um, bringing us up and um, going over our first meeting of the year. And um, and also I'd like to thank our sponsors too, because they're a big, big part of um, Meth and Trotting Club um, for the whole season. So I mean, a big thank you to them and, and going forward. And we hope you know we can keep them and and we can and um, entice some more to come and join us. Some more sponsors. So uh, thanks very much, Jess. Really appreciate it. We're getting to a very busy stage here at HRNZ where we're planning awards ceremonies and it's getting very close to that. Uh, I'm chatting with Courtney Clark here at HRNZ. And Courtney, for those who don't know, what, what is your role here? Um, I am the communications and marketing coordinator here. And that sounds like a very involved title, but, but what is it exactly that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so I just do the general marketing. Um, I look after most of the social media. Um, also involved in things like the Junior Driver Champs, um, the Facebook videos, the Harness Jewels um, and the awards. Yes, and the awards, which is very timely given that um, yeah, you've got the big task of putting it all together, Courtney. And for those who aren't aware, where are the awards being held this year and, and when? Um, so this year they're on September the 29th, which is a Saturday evening, um, and they are held at Alexandra Park in the Tasman Room. 
Okay, so this year Auckland, so they've, they've changed around and that means that the North Island group will get their chance to attend this year. And in terms of costs, and um, there's also a, a discount available, so, so what are the tickets cost? Um, so for an individual ticket, you're looking at $149.50 um, and you can also buy a table of 10 and if you do that, you get a discount, so you receive one free ticket. Fantastic. So essentially you're buying nine and getting that tenth one free, so a good opportunity to get the staff together and, and friends to celebrate. And understand, even if you can't attend the awards, Courtney, there's, there's going to be an after party. Yes, there is this year. So um, the after party will begin at 10 o'clock. We have a DJ coming along um, and it will be held also in the Tasman Room. So if you don't go to the awards, you can still buy a ticket to the after party and those tickets are only $15, which includes supper. Oh, fantastic. And so if you do go to the awards, you automatically get a ticket to that after party as well. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Okay, so uh, in terms of booking tickets, how can people buy? And of course, there'll be a cutoff date for those. Yep, so the cutoff is actually next Friday, the 14th of September. Um, to book your tickets, you can just head to our website, so the Harness Racing New Zealand website. Um, and on the front page there on the slide, um, you can find an awards details page. And so if you just click into that, then there's a link there that takes you to iTicket. And if you have any problems, you can just contact me as well. Fantastic. So that's Courtney Clark here at HRNZ and the website www.hrnz.co.nz as Courtney mentioned on the main new slide. You can find the information there or just give us a call. And you've kindly given us a very, very lucrative prize to give away. Courtney, what are you offering up? So we're offering two awards tickets. Um, so the prize value of that is $300. Um, so all we need you to do is jump on our Facebook page, which is the Harness Racing New Zealand Facebook page, and find this um, podcast and give it a like and also comment on it and you're in the draw. And we will announce that next week. Fantastic. So get on the HRNZ Facebook page, find the post for the uh, Harness Half Hour podcast, like it, comment, maybe you know, give us some details as to why you'd want to go along. Uh, that prize value $300, so we'll announce the winner next week. Courtney, thank you for your time, and good luck, because I know that there's a lot involved. You're doing all the videos and putting the run sheet together. It's not an easy task, is it? It's not. There is a lot involved, but um, I'm sure we'll get there, and I'm sure it'll be a great night. Well, time now at this stage of the podcast to catch up with Harness bookmaker Richard Wilson. Uh, Richard, heading back to Thursday, last Thursday at Cambridge, and, and punters looked like they were on the ball early on there. Uh, yes, certainly, Jess. The first four or five races, uh, they had it all over us. Um, the, the best one for them there was uh, Arden Voyager. Of course, uh, you may remember last week, uh, blew the score up and with a lot of money on and uh, didn't take any really real part in the race, but... Uh, he put his right, the right foot forward there on uh, on Thursday and got home well for the punters at a dollar seventy five. Uh, didn't budge from that price. There was plenty of bets uh, between one and two thousand. Thankfully, no uh, no real real big bet on him. So uh, the money was spread round there to a lot of punters uh, and good on them for backing up there. Really, uh, the best single collect of the night came from a thousand dollars on Belfast at three ninety. Uh, that was in race three. And a fifteen hundred dollar bet on Il Parata at two seventy. Uh, that wasn't bad either in race five. So uh, things were looking pretty dire there after five races. But then uh, somewhere, somehow, a switch got flicked, and uh, the next four races were pretty good. Uh, Flying Steps attracted a eight thousand dollar bet there at three fifty in race six, and uh, was run down. Uh, Alta Leone uh, was very well backed into a dollar forty five in race seven, and again got run down. Shenandoah and Master of Escape, uh, they were very popular in race eight. And then in the last, Great Fantasy uh, would have been a very bad result for us, uh, but was knocked off late by My Boy Boo. So uh, we got out of trouble, really. Yeah, it looks like a, a race meeting of two halves at Cambridge. And on Friday night at Addington, uh, Scarlett Banner got it all right um, for, for the faithful that have stuck by it. Yeah, exactly. It's a similar story to uh, Arden Voyager there, really. Uh, Scarlett Banner... Uh, paced away in her first couple of trotting uh, starts, but she got it all right there. Uh, $3,500 bet at uh, $240, $6,000 at $2, uh, the best bets on her. Um, in the same race, there's plenty of support for Zazoe, uh, that, including a $5,000 bet at 270 So uh, it was a two-horse race, really, and uh, so it proved in the, in the final stages, and uh, Scarlet Banner too good. Um, the other one that uh, that got us really quite a bit there with Medusa uh, continued her great vein of form. 
340, uh, closed right into 280 and got home well. And uh, Monkey's Way, so the three trot races, uh, punters got us in every one of them. And uh, there were some good collects there. He was uh, 850 into 750. A uh, couple of other winning uh, winners for punters were uh, First Class Lady, opened at 580, closed into 420. And uh, there were some big bets that missed out, luckily for us. Uh, $5,000 Franco Riot at uh, $3.00. Five thousand on Kingslayer at two forty, and there was a two thousand dollar bet Morningstar Gold at one seventy. All right, so a few misses late, uh, later in the piece, and of course it, it didn't end there. We had Sunday in Winton, and a good day for punters there by the sound. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, Saturday there at Winton. It was uh, my old uh, old track, uh, but you wouldn't have known it the way that uh, the results went. Uh, it was uh, pretty much a disastrous day for us there, Jess. Uh, the best bet of the day there, $3,500 on Doubt Me Not at $4. And uh, other big collects came from Heaven's Art, $1.75 into $1.70. There was a $5,000 bet there at $1.75. Uh, they latched on to Loretta Franco, twelve fifty dollars an opening into nine fifty. dollars uh, Mr. Kiwi put it pretty solid there, two thirty into two ten, And uh, even Grace Burns, uh, five twenty dollars into five, And Pyramid Magic in the trot, six twenty dollars into six. So uh, some juicy dividends there, and punters were all over them. Uh, luckily for me, the wins by the manipulator, he was 5 out to 580, and Molina Lowe in the last, 20 out to 21. Um, they saved my bacon, really. There was a $4,500 bet on Stickman in the last there at 210, um, and that was all that uh, adverted a uh, absolute disaster for me. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. So that was Saturday at Winton, and then Sunday, Rangiora, uh, very busy for harness racing. The first starters proved to be popular. Yeah, indeed. Uh, there was a number of first starters uh, there, and uh, there was a ten thousand dollar bet on its major look at two eighty in race seven. Uh, there was no bets on over five hundred dollars on Car Pie in race four, but uh, the total amount uh, invested there was was close to ten thousand dollars. So there was a heap of bets around the two between two and four hundred dollars on him. Uh, he was four eighty into three eighty. Uh, in race four, and also in race four, there was a ten thousand dollar bet on Majestic Mannequin at three eighty. So uh, that was quite a good race for for us. Uh, the other first starter, Adam Patron. Uh, now it was well backed, uh, eighteen hundred dollars and a thousand dollars, and quite a few five hundred dollar bets at the two twenty. Uh, so not much uh, going the punter's way in that lot. Uh, but one they did latch on to was Rainy River in the first, uh, four eighty into four forty. And uh, there were some decent collects off Air Park Flyer. Uh, the best bet there, 5000 at 380 All right, the, the, the loyal followers with Air Park Flyer as well there at Rangiora on Sunday. Now, futures markets, once again, you've been kept very busy. Of course, we've had the Morris Holmes Vars, and we're build, building up to other New Zealand Cup lead-up races now, Richard. Um, you've got those futures markets open. How have they been going? Yeah, not too bad. There's a uh, the, the bit of a mover this week, uh, Star Galleria, the, the news coming out that uh, a massive uh, off, offer to buy the horse has been turned down. Uh, so that sparked some interest there. He's into $9. And uh, in the Dominion, that's uh, options 1961 and 1962. And in the Dominion, uh, Alderbeck uh, has been quite popular over the last week. Uh, that's seen that price into 21 uh, We've also got the free-for-all open 1984, 1985. And uh, the interdoms, there's not much happening in the interdom markets. They're pretty quiet there, but uh, they, they're both open. The, the pacing final, 1995, and the trotting one, 1996. Okay, so they are the futures markets. You can find them at tab.co.nz. And multi of the week, who's the, like, the, well, I should say, the clever punter this week with that multi? Yeah, well, there's a, um, I've, I've found a couple here, Jess. Uh, the early one in the, in the week, uh, a $318 investment on uh, started with Arden Voyager at $1.80 into uh, Naomi Osaka to win her semi-final against Madison Keys uh, 2-0 and uh, at 350. So that uh, $318 returned $2,003. So a uh, pretty smart bet there. And uh, of course, Miss Osaka going on to win the final uh, in the interesting circumstances, shall we say, yesterday. And uh, the other multi I found here, uh, $100 yesterday, a bit of a cross-code effort here, Galaxy Miss uh, $550 at Te Aroha, and So Wicked at 420 also at Te Aroha, into Kingmaker uh, in the last race yesterday at Rangiora, at, he was at $2, uh, so that $100 turned into 4620 
My goodness, and it's um, good to see too, Richard, that people are continuing to cross code. We've had greyhounds, thoroughbreds, tennis, sport, all through these multis, so it does pay to, to level them across all the playing fields. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, the beauty with the fixed odds. Uh, if you're on the tote, you can only do an all-up uh, on the same meeting, but of course with the fixed odds, you can go wherever you like, uh, any sport, any race, anywhere, so... Uh, that's the advantage, and punters are certainly using it. And made very easy too with the multi bet builder on tab.co.nz. Richard, thank you so much for your time. Once again, I know it's your, your day off, although technically you are going off to do some work. So we appreciate it as always, and we'll catch you again next week. Yep, not a problem, Jess. Very good. What's coming up this week in the harness racing world? Meeting-wise, Friday night we see a double header with Addington and Alexandra Park. And as mentioned by Hamish Malloy, we have the first grass track meeting for the season with Methvin on Sunday. Don't forget too, Anthony McDonnell will be here very shortly with his free seminars. They'll be held in Invercargill Christchurch in Auckland starting next week, Friday 21st of September in Invercargill. If you want to find out more about finding new owners, tips on self-promotion, owner communication or just listening, listen to an empowering public speaker, you won't want to miss this. Uh, this is open to all industry members, not just trainers, drivers and the likes. And for full information, you can visit hrnz.co.nz or contact me directly jess at hrnz.co.nz Also don't forget the Canterbury Harness Awards are happening this Saturday, that's the 15th of September. Full information, you can find that on the club news segment on the HRNZ website as well. You can get your tickets right up until the night. And that's it for this week's Harness Half Hour. Thanks to HRNZ Marketing. The Harness Half Hour podcast is now available on the Punters Lounge, Spotify and iTunes. Mm-hmm.